In this video we're going to make something. We're going to turn this old tie rod that uh, has stock, it has uh, rubber bushings here that go between the uh, on the mounting point on the car. Uh, these ones have been converted over to poly bushings but um, still this is a constant cause of issues for me. You can see that this one has started to bend. This plate here that's welded to the tie rod has started to bend due to the, the forces on it. I, I've gone through about uh, three of these poly bushes already because they crack uh, because of the, the torsion or the, uh, the load on them and it splits the bushes. Uh, the rubber ones go out really quickly uh, but I've also had these poly ones go out on me and now uh, this poly's, poly bushing is holding up, but the, the actual weld here is starting to uh, get tweaked due to the pressure on the uh, arm. So we're going to convert the whole system over to a rose joint or a heim. Uh, I've got two different ones I'm going to try here. This one is a uh, Teflon insert rose joint. And this one is a poly bushing insert. Um, which one I go with will depend on how much uh, side load there is, how much twist. So when this is mounted to the car, if it's canted off like that, um, I'm probably going to need to use this one because this insert here will allow a lot of angle off. Uh, whereas this poly bushing is just simple straight and it won't uh, allow for much angle off. I mean, you can be off slightly, but um, I wouldn't want to have much of an angle uh, in this tie rod. So uh, what I've got here is the two ends, rod ends. I've got the jam nut. I actually have two jam nuts. These two rod ends are left-handed, and I've gone ahead and I've cut my old tie bar at about six and a half inches from uh, the holes here to uh, the end of the threads and I've threaded it. You can see here I've, I've threaded this one already and so what you need to do that is just a simple tool. Uh, this is a die 5818, 5 8 inch uh, diameter and 18 meets a fine thread. So you get yourself one of these off of Amazon or eBay or uh, at a hardware store and then you can cut your threads. What you'll need to do to make it is to cut off the end. This is actually part of the end of that tie rod or tie bar and uh, where's the rest of it? Here's, here's the rest of it. So what I did was I cut this off here and then I tried out my hand at uh, cutting a thread here and it started going crooked so I had to cut it off again and try again. I ended up getting one to go straight and so I just cut it all the way down the shaft and then I cut the threads at the length I needed. This uh, middle insert here is just a threaded, the right hand threads and left hand threads. So you can adjust this while it's on the vehicle to uh, whatever length you need. Okay, one uh, thing to note, I, I test fit this in the car and I had to, um, this tube in the middle is a little bit longer than I would like. Um, so you actually have to thread all the way down to the uh, welds here. So I needed that extra half inch of thread in order to make this the total length short enough to fit on the vehicle. So watch for that. I might try to find a different um, swedge tube here uh, to put in the middle. But um, it does work and it has about uh, a half inch um, of adjustability on e either side when it's installed. So other than that, the mounting hardware, um, I got a 5 8 bolt and you can see here that I, I had to cut 
the top of it off because when it's fit here, there's not enough room. This this bolt, the head of it was too thick or too tall, and it interfered with the um, rod end as it was mounted. So what I did was I cut this off here and I kind of just uh, beveled it out. Another thing I did was um, I chopped off, made a flat edge on two, on two of the sides and that way it fits perfectly in here because you can't get you can't get a wrench in here to hold this as you're tightening down the nut on the back end so um, this fits perfectly in here and then I can tighten the back end without needing to hold this with a wrench or pliers I'll leave a link in the description to these uh, mounting hardware that I got as far as the uh, mounting hardware for the actual rod end, this is a half inch. Um, you got to get one with a long enough shoulder. It's about 1.45 inches of a shoulder needed um, to fit in here. And so this half inch, this the hole here in the mounting hardware is exactly a half inch. So I actually had to take a Dremel and just kind of um, grind it out just a tiny bit um, in order for this to fit and it fits perfectly in there now um, and you see the shoulder is all the way and then the threads are on the outside I did find that the head on this one this pan head is too thick um, what I'm gonna get is a regular hex head um, without the pan you don't really need don't really need the the hat on there um, because this is such a tight fit that a regular hex head will be will be fine in there. So I'll just put the hex head on there with the same size shoulder and um, half inch here. What I did find is that there's not a lot of room on the inside of the uh, mount, uh, the vehicle chassis mount. Um, so this two, the two metal plates that come down are only about 2.5 uh, inches total in width, I think. Um, so you really need skinny hardware. So what I did on this is I, I ordered these nuts, but they're too, they're too tall. So I cut one in half and actually I found a source, a supplier for a half height nylock. Um, one half inch by 20 uh, nut so I ordered some of those but for now I'm gonna go ahead and install it with this um, it works fine um, but I didn't like the fact that I, I had to cut it so I'm, I ordered um, a regular hex head on this side and a half height nut on this head side and it'll be a nylock um, nut so it'll it'll hold itself on I won't back back off um, for now I'm gonna install it like this um, with a lock nut or lock washer and this um, my own half my own DIY half height nut on there and then um, the mounting uh, the rod end mounted in the middle. To mount this in the vehicle um, you got to put the the 5 8 nut in first and then um, you also have to mount the rod end before you put it in the vehicle because there's not enough room to get the bolt in um, once it's mounted. So I've got these I ordered these um, uh, rod end uh, spacers and I'll leave a link to where I bought, got these from. I had to grind it down in order to make it smaller because to fit this rod end, it's made it's made perfectly. This is a quarter inch, or I purchased a quarter inch height uh, spacer, two of them. And they're made perfectly to fit 
a heim joint but this night um, poly joint that i'm going to try out is uh wider right here and so i had to grind down these to fit so i'm going to put this flat surface up against the, the poly bushing on either side like so and then that goes in between the mount and then obviously the bolt goes through all right so mounting uh, this into the car uh, basically I just angled it down and then you can fit it into its resting position and I'll put the, the washer and the 5 8 nut onto the back this bolt here is two inch bolt you don't need that much but that's the smallest I could find um, with this uh, pan head so um, if you can find a smaller one then go ahead uh, you only really need about an inch uh, inch and a half of, uh, of a bolt uh, but this will work fine it doesn't interfere with the uh, torsion tube on the back side so um, there's, there's plenty of clearance back there for the two inch bolt leave the nut at the back end loose for now um, and then you can pull pull it up and kind of set it into place on this front mounting point what you might need to do is get your jack and lift it up a little bit to uh, straighten out the uh, suspension and so I've jacked it up enough to take the weight put the weight on the torsion bar so that the, the car is completely under load and now if you can see down here got almost lined up on the mounting bolt hole I need to back off the threads a little bit so I need to tighten this tube down just a little bit in order to make this shorter and uh, line up the bolt holes right there and uh, before I do that though I'll tighten down the mounting the 5 8 bolt on the back just to tighten it down all the way and then I'll line up these bolt holes, uh, the bolt hole for the mounting point on the lower control arm uh, in order to uh, slide the bolt in there. I was initially concerned that this, uh, the arm might be, uh, not be perpendicular or, or straight out from this mounting point and, and that, that would force me to use one of these heim joints or, or rose joints. Uh, but it looks like this poly bushing is not being tweaked left or right at all when the car is under normal load um, and that the torsion bar is, is fully loaded up like the weight of the car is on it. So I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this uh, poly bushing will be good and it, it won't in decrease the longevity of it. So I'm going to go with this setup for now. Um, I do have this uh, heim joint as a backup in case this poly uh, bushing starts to fail on me um, I'll obviously be uh, inspecting this every every few hundred miles just to see how this is holding up and um, and then I'll let you know if it uh, has any issues I'm just going to show you how the uh, arm articulates inside the mount there I'm going to ink or take some uh, weight onto the uh, suspension and you can see how the arm or the bushing is able to rotate there now all the weight is on the torsion bar and then I'll release the jack show you how it moves uh, down to its uh, fully extended position.
so you can see with the motion of the suspension that uh, that arm articulates perfectly uh, north south or up and down and uh, there shouldn't be a lot of twisting motion or uh, or side load on that joint so I'm pretty happy with that I'm gonna go with that and I'll uh, I'll keep you informed on how how it's working out in the long run and uh, hopefully that helps someone out and uh, maybe you can do this project in your own garage leave any questions you have in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video